Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Welcome to, boy, I think this is episode 70. How do you even keep track? Because I type it into <laughs> YouTube every week. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, welcome to what I'm pretty sure is episode 70 of our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. That means we've been doing these for a while. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, and this is an exciting time of year. We're, we're really... Ski season is rapidly approaching. It is right around the corner. In many in many senses, it's already here. Yeah. You know, last week we talked about people skiing at a basin and stuff like that. A lot of you commented saying that you skied, so thank you. A lot of you even said, like, we'll make turns for you, so special thanks to those skiers. I don't quite feel it, like, in my body you like yeah. after my first day, but it's nice emotionally. Mentally, yeah. right. I hope they were good turns. You know, the first day is always <laughs> a little interesting. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, but anyways, we're, we're, ski season is all but here, um, and I think that's reflected in this week's topics. Before we get to that, you'll notice that we have a comparison wall um, prepped here, and you'll probably also notice that it's women's skis. Uh, we've had a lot of questions and comments about when we were going to start women's skis, so next week we'll be doing women's 90 millimeter all mountain skis. Uh, we've also had a lot of questions about front side. So after this, we'll go back to men's front side, and then probably women's, and then more men's front side. Um, so we got a, a few more to do on the men's side, but we're going to start working in some women's comparisons as well. So this will be good. fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, and with that said, let's get straight into the news. Um, World Cup season starts this weekend. Pretty exciting. On the Alpine side of things, uh, we're in Solden. Men and women will both be complete, competing in giant slalom. Um, I believe the women are first. Uh, if you want to watch the race, um, you're going to have to wake up around, <clears throat> I believe, 3 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and according to a recent post from Michaela Schifrin that was also shared by the U.S. ski team, uh, you will be able to see the race streaming on NBC's Peacock service. Which I don't get at a time when I'm asleep. So You could, buy, uh, you could <laughs> purchase it. I know. Uh, <laughs> but you have also already mentioned that you will not be waking up to watch this race. I don't think it's in the cards. I don't blame you, Bob. But I have seen some comments on social media and other places that uh, plenty of people will be waking up to watch it. Um, and if you have the Peacock streaming service, it'll also be on demand afterwards, too. Yeah. So you can wake up at your normal time and watch it later. I would rather do that. You can do that. Um, on the freestyle side of things, uh, we have the first Big Air event of the year. It's kind of a classic early season scaffolding Big Air competition. Mm -hmm. um, that is in Switzerland. I actually think the qualifiers might be going on right now. May have already started. Um, so we may be already in World Cup season on the freestyle side of things. Um, obviously, it's an Olympic year. Yep. So these kind of these early season events hold a little bit more weight than they do in a non-Olympic year. People trying to qualify for the team, both both on the alpine and freestyle side. So it's always always fun to kind of watch how that pans out. Right. Um, it always feels like pretty darn cutthroat on the freestyle side. Yeah. Like there's just there's so many good skiers, and it's like. It feels a little different than ski racing, and like on a given day, any one of them can, if they're skiing at their best, like, and you land your tricks, you can, yeah. you could win. So it's always really fun to see how that pans out, and that'll that'll be fun to watch. Um, that kind of carries us straight into our second topic of the week. Uh, Michaela Schifrin has announced that she's aiming to compete in all five ski racing disciplines in the Olympics. Yeah, and my point was, why stop there? Why limit it to Alpine? Go skier, skier cross, go Nordic. Yep. You go uh, to the Summer Olympics, test your medal there. Like. Yep. To which my <laughs> response was, I think skier cross is probably the limit. Yeah. I don't know. I bet she's a good mountain biker. Yeah. No, we, we speculated on some summer, some summer activities, athletics yeah. as well. Um, you, you, <clears throat> you ventured a guess that she's probably a pretty good soccer player. Yep. That's kind of the impression I get. You know, excellent athlete. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't yeah. <laughs> but, I mean. The five <laughs> Alpine events is pretty, pretty that's, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive on yeah. its own. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool. And we have a quote from Michaela. Something I'm dreaming about is to be able to compete in each event in China. So it's certainly a goal, you know, not something that she is planning on necessarily, although it certainly feels like when Michaela Schifrin puts her mind to something, she accomplishes it. Yeah. So certainly wouldn't be surprised if we see her competing in all five events in China, which would be really cool. Um, in in that, that statement and in saying that she did acknowledge the physical and mental difficulties of the task, you know, specifically like technical versus speed events, yeah. like you, yeah, it requires a lot of travel for all the different events. Right. So that's cool. Um, and kind of the underlying theme of this is she has said that her primary goal is to be a contender for the World Cup overall, which like once again. It feels like if Michaela Schifrin wants to win the World Cup overall, she's probably going to. Right. And, like, I remember she could do it, like, by, like, mid-season. Right. And, like, yeah. last year she was close without doing, like, any speed events. Right. So it'll be a fun fun season. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this season's Alpine racing. Um, and, obviously, it's a lot of fun watching Michaela Schifrin, too. So whether you're whether you're waking up at... At 3 a.m. or not to watch her race tomorrow morning. Uh, pretty exciting that, yeah. the, that the ski racing season is starting. Um, and then third topic of the week. This is something that we've been chatting about on and off here on, on Top 5 Fridays and Chairlift Chat. Um, resorts are really continuing to struggle to find workers. Uh, you know, the, the term great resignation is just kind of being thrown around in society in general right now. And, yeah. and certainly not... Uh, not something that's that's not reaching the the ski industry, so to speak. Um, primary culprit right now is the lack of affordable housing. Um, that's making it less likely for U.S. citizens to move to a mountain town. You know that that like po those post college years or right. That's I feel like that that's the classic kind of move to ski town age. Yeah, like that property doesn't exist anymore. Like in certain in, places, yeah. absolutely. I mean, Stowe is a pretty perfect example. Like it's it's tough tough to find yeah. affordable housing in Stowe right now. Even in surrounding towns, it's tough to find affordable housing. And right. The same is true across the board. Um, and and similarly, it's becoming harder and harder to hire J one visas because of the just the uncertainty of the housing. Yeah, and these resorts. Yep. it's pretty challenging to provide enough employee housing to cover all of this. You know, it, it's the same same conversation. Like, what's the incentive of turning that building into employee housing rather than a bunch of Airbnbs or something right. like that? So, pretty challenging. Um, the Aspen Skiing Company head of HR even went as far as saying, and I quote. It's gone from very difficult to almost critical, <laughs> uh, which doesn't sound great. It's not good. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's not like there's like 20 employees short. There are hundreds, hundreds. of employees short. You yeah. Know, and this is the article from Colorado I read was pretty interesting. And, they, and yeah, they were saying that it's this, the scope of it is just huge. It's not just that this is an isolated incident. No. Yeah. Huge. Um, and, and, you know, it's not just real estate, you know, it's, it's obviously a combination, um, but employees are, are, are turned off by low wages, you know, right. service industry jobs, and that includes ski resorts, typically don't offer tremendously high wages. You know, traditionally, it's kind of been like the, the theme has been, for better or for worse, this, the theme has been, you're not getting paid that much because you get to live in the mountains. Right. But now you can't afford to live in the mountains. Right. So. I mean, I have like literally been told that exact thing right in in my past specifically when i lived in colorado i remember superiors saying things like yeah you get to live here that was my first interview question when i went to get a job at a ski and bike shop in breckenridge, in breckenridge was do you yeah. have housing yeah and i did yeah but like they like don't hire you if you don't have a place to live. Yeah. Like on, on speculation. This was a long time ago. I mean, things were a lot easier then, but when I was 19, I moved to Mammoth, and we kind of had jobs lined up, 
but didn't have anywhere to live, I yeah. certainly wouldn't recommend to anybody driving across the country with three 19-year-olds and not <laughs> having a place to live on the other end. Uh, we did that. And, yeah, I remember, like, I went to Mammoth and met my future boss and in doing paperwork and stuff, you know, he was like, no, I'm, I'm not hiring you until you have a, a physical place to live. Right. Which, I think, you know, it's not uncommon, but, like, that's the holdup. Right. Um, so... Pretty challenging. Um, because of that, resorts are starting to, a lot of resorts are typically offering a $15 an hour starting wage, um, which is great. But there also are a lot of indicators that that may start kind of a wage price spiral, you know, just kind of boost inflation in that area. And, and essentially, like, if, if that happens, you're kind of negating the, the wage increases. Yeah. Like, if, if cost of living goes up at the same rate as your wage, it's not solving any problem. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the short-term rental thing is definitely kind of more of a short-term solution. Yeah. Like, I have friends in town that, you know, basically make their living off of providing, of, out of owning a short-term rental and I mean, Airbnb. It, and, like, that's how, they, that's how they make their living. So there's those people to think of, too. It's an extremely attractive opportunity. Yeah. And you can't really fault somebody for wanting to... Yeah. better their own lives as best as they can so it's, it just leaves us in a, a tricky situation yep. as a as an industry and as a society in general you know this isn't just exclusive to the ski industry no but it's a nice little microcosm shot of what's going on elsewhere yeah pretty representative yeah um yeah if any of you are, are in this position certainly let us know and you know we'd, we'd love to communicate you with through the comments um yeah we, we're, we're feeling the challenges here in Stowe mm -hmm. and I'm sure others are as well. Um, so, fingers crossed that, you know, something will happen. Yeah, I mean, there's Types just... things always happen. <laughs> like the bubble can burst. The incentive to build regular housing is so much greater than that to build... Affordable. You know, affordable or employee housing. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, let us know if you have any thoughts on the topic. I'm sure you do. It's pretty... It's hot. Thought, thought provoking. <laughs> hot, it's a hot topic, hot topic. right topic. now. Um, and then fourth topic of the week, this is kind of a fun one. Uh, Benjamin Alexander is aiming to become the first Jamaican alpine skier, um, specifically in the Olympics. He, he's trying to, trying to qualify for this season's Olympics. A um, little background on Benjamin. He, has, he was born to a British mother and Jamaican father, so hence his eligibility to compete as a Jamaican. Um, he has traditionally worked in finance as well as as an international DJ. I love throwing the word international before DJ. I mean, if we were DJs and we went and played a gig in Canada... In Canada, it'd be an international be, DJ. Yeah. we got to go test some skis in Canada this season, so we're international <laughs> ski testers. Yeah. Any anyway, record? <laughs> anyways, I, I digress. Um, but he's trying to make the Olympics, uh, which, is which you know, these things are always... always I don't know, funny? Is funny the right word? Entertaining. Yeah. It's an entertaining story. It is. Um, he started skiing in 2017 after DJing a party in Whistler. Uh, I think he even said like he didn't ski for a couple years after that, and then he, he saw the Olympics or saw some ski racing, and it really kind of like solidified in his, in his mind that yep. that's what he wanted to do. Um, in a quote from him, he said, I believe I'm... 3,748th in the world, uh, which he said is right where he needs to be. Just to really make that next leap. Yep. yep. Um, but he is the number one ranked alpine ski racer in Jamaica. One out of? One? I don't know. <laughs> I, that, I don't know. They didn't really go into detail about that. Uh, I can't imagine there are too many. Um, but, yeah, there are some kind of interesting ways to qualify for the Olympics without being, like, one of the best in the best best of the best in the world. Yeah. Um, there's some clips of him skiing. Uh, and I don't know. If he's ranked 3,748th, what's my ranking? I don't know. We should go find out. I got to do some fist, <laughs> some fist races or something. How does that even work? I don't know. He had a big smile on his face, though. Absolutely. That really counts for a whole lot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I can't fault the guy for having a goal and, and right. trying to achieve it. Nope. I mean, that's like... That's just, that's the dream. Yeah. Like, you can't fault anybody for, for picking a goal and, and working hard to achieve it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm rooting for him. 
Sounds like he has pretty realistic expectations, too. I think so. Um, I don't think he'll be winning the Olympics, but gosh, if he makes it and can represent his country, I think yep. that's really cool. That is awesome. Um, it, he did say it was burning a hole in his pocket. so He's just figuring out that skiing is expensive. <laughs> turns, turns, out, <laughs> turns out ski racing is pretty expensive. Um, and with that, we can get right into our edits of the week. Um, big, big week for edits. We got five edits of the week this week, so uh, I don't know. Go start the microwave popcorn and settle in for some ski edits. Yeah, work them into your 3 a.m. Yeah, uh, there you go. Wake, wake up at 2.30. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, you watch these <laughs> first and then just go straight into the Solden races. Um, but anyways, first edit of the week is the 50 from Cody Townsend, episode 29, Castle Peak in Idaho. I don't know how that man has enough energy to do what he does. It makes me tired just watching. It literally, it's one, yeah, it's literally one of those yeah. things where I'm like, nah, just, no, I, you, should just, you should just go home yeah. and sit down for a little bit. Um, but it, it's really entertaining watching watching his adventures. Um, he's another guy that just always seems like he has a smile on his face. Yeah, I don't know how, man. Even like, in the face of just really challenging situations. Yeah. My face would not be as happy. No, I feel like <laughs> angry. Um, and then second out of the week is Peace and Chaos from Tebow Magnin. Uh, really good skiing, some awesome backcountry lines, and just some really kind of playful backcountry skiing as well. So certainly check that out. Um, this one's pretty unique. It's called Boots Over Brim from Sweetgrass Productions. And it's Amy... Engerbretson? I think, okay. I think I got that. Um, Amy Engerbretson is a professional skier and classically trained dancer. Uh, and this, this short little film or short edit kind of goes back and forth between like, uh, like kind of western, not line dancing, but that style dancing yep. and skiing. Kind of highlighting the correlations between skiing and dancing. Yeah, it's a nice crossover. Yeah, did you happen to read where the name came from? No. So her and her father were dancing at a bar, I believe, in the Jackson Hole area. And, you know, she's a classically trained, really good dancer. It sounds like her father is, too. And they started doing, like, some really fancy stuff where, like, they were, like, she was getting inverted. Yeah. Like, rolling off his back and stuff like that. And the bouncer kicked them out and said, no boots over brim. Got it. Which I thought was funny. I like it. I had yeah. never heard that term before, no, no boots over brim. I don't spend right. too much time in Western. Working on your two-step. Yeah, no. I'm pretty bad at that stuff. Anytime I've had to line dance <laughs> in my life, I get kind of nervous. Um, and then we have Freehand uh, from Level 1, directed by a good friend of mine, Brady Perrin. Um, he's got an awesome eye for skiing, and it's featuring the talented skiing of Jake Magoo. We were kind of going back and forth. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right. Magoo. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no one's ever corrected me before, and I've been saying it like that for a while, so my apologies if I'm wrong. Um, but he is perhaps one of the most unique skiers you'll ever see. We watched a few clips yep. of him skiing. Never skis with poles. His hands touch the ground a lot. So a stark contrast from how I like to ski. Right, I me enjoy, too. I enjoy poles, <laughs> and I don't like it when my hands hit the ground. Um, and then finally, we have the 2021 trailer for Return of the Turn, uh, which is a series of short little edits from Blizzard Technica, typically featuring the talented skiing of Marcus Kasten. Um, so that'll be fun. They always have some really cool stuff. I'm impressed with how he can drive the skis with the like the little Pintech bindings on them. Yeah, nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking, but if he can do it, it gives me confidence. That anyone can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's a result of, of excellent balance yep. and control. Yep. You know, those bindings, you don't just want to be, like, wildly making different powerful movements. But, yeah, if you can ski like Marcus Kasten, go for it. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Um, so that's it for edits of the week. Bob, anything going on this weekend? Hockey? You're Seven, transitioning yeah. from, from children's soccer to children's hockey, it yep. sounds like. Yeah, it's a pretty quick pretty quick transition, settling right into the new schedule. So yep. we'll be at the rink quite a bit and out doing stuff outside, as long as the weather's nice. Sweet. Yep. Um, good. Everybody join me in, in saying, go Red Sox. 
I think I just alienated some <laughs> some subscribers. I was thinking about wearing my Red Sox hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Major League Baseball, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, Dodgers just won their last game. It's now 3-2, and, and Red Sox Astros is 3-2, so... Good stuff. Be watching some yeah. some baseball tonight, stressfully. <laughs> Not really. It keeps me up. It, yeah, it's it's an entertaining thing. Um, so yeah, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye.